All right, suppose we have a power series, a n, x to the power of n, with a radius of convergence r greater than 0. Then this defines a function of x on an open interval between negative r and r. So now we study the calculus of this function, that is the continuity and differentiability and integrability. So let's do it. First of all, we prove that this function is continuous. Continuous on uh, this open interval between negative r and r. Okay, so in order to prove that a function f of x is continuous on this interval, what we need to do is uh, to show that for any a in this interval, uh, we have a limit f of x, x going to a is equal to f of a. So, uh, so this is the definition of continuous function. And what this means is that for any positive epsilon, there exists some delta positive such that if x and a are close enough, that is less than delta, then the difference between f of x and f of a is less than this arbitrarily small epsilon. So this is what ultimately what we are going to show. Okay, let's start uh, proving. Uh, first of all, we show that uh, this function is continuous on uh, an interval, uh, let's say i, between negative s and s, where uh, s is between 0 and r, so less than the radius of convergence. And this s can be anything, okay? And let t be the middle point between s and r. Okay, then uh, f of t, which is a series, uh, positive term uh, is a series, okay? Uh, a n t to the power of n converges Absolutely. Uh, we have shown this uh, theorem before. So if a series converges, uh, uh, a power series, power series converges, then if this argument is less than the radius of convergence, then uh, this power series converges absolutely. And we will use this fact later. Now we prove, uh, we proceed the proof in two steps. And step one, we show that uh, this uh, sequence of functions, this converges to f of x. Uh, f, fn means the partial sum, okay? So fn of x is the partial sum. Uh, maybe I should write k here. k from zero to n and a k x to the power of k. Okay, so this is a partial sum. So this defines a sequence of functions. And for each x in the interval i, uh, so this becomes, so if we substitute x with some uh, real number between uh, negative s and positive s, then this is a sequence of real numbers. Okay, so this for each x, this sequence converges to f of x. Okay, so this uh, so so this convergence holds for any x within that interval. So actually, we can say that the fun se sequence of functions f of x, f n of x, converges to a function f of x. So this convergence is called uniform convergence. So it's called uniform because 
it doesn't depend on the value of x as long as x in, is in the domain of the function. More precisely, we show the following. Uh, for any epsilon that is uh, positive, there exists some natural number, capital N, such that for all natural number, uh, actually this is this natural number can be zero, so let's say uh, non-negative integers. And for all x in the interval, i, if n is greater than, or so this lowercase n is greater than or equal to this uppercase n, then uh, the difference between f of x and fn of x is less than epsilon. So this is what we mean by the sequence of functions fn of x converges to fn. So this is called uniform convergence. Okay, so let's prove uh, this statement. Okay, let epsilon be any positive number. So it can be small or large, but usually we assume it is small. And since this uh, series, uh, absolute value of a n times t to the power of n, uh, because of the absolute convergence, this converges. Therefore, uh, each term, so the sequence limit and going to infinity a n absolute value times t to the power of n. So this converges to zero. Okay. Since this converges to zero, in particular, uh, a, uh, a n uh, times to the power of n is bounded. So that means that means uh, there exists some positive number m such that uh, this a n times t to the power of n is less than m. So this is the upper bound of the absolute value. Oh, by the way, this is of course for uh, this. This holds for all uh, natural numbers. Okay, uh, maybe we could we should include zero. And now also we have uh, zero um, s over t is less than one. Okay because t is uh, defined to be uh, s plus r divided by 2, so t is greater than s, so s divided by t is less than 1. Therefore, uh, let's say since this holds, uh, the geometric series uh, s over t to the power of n converges. And this converges means that uh, this partial sum, uh, so if you take away the first uh, n uh, terms from this sum, let's say uh, from k equal to n plus 1 to infinity, then this geometric series uh, converges to 0. Okay, so that means for arbitrary epsilon, that is uh, this epsilon, uh, this can be less than uh, epsilon over m. So this m is this bound m, okay? So that basically this means epsilon over m is any small positive number, okay? So it, it is possible if we take a large enough n, then this can be arbitrarily small. 
uh, four, uh, let's say uh, large enough n means n is greater than or equal to some uh, natural number n. Now, for all n greater than or equal to capital N and uh, for all x in the interval, uh, which is between negative s and s, uh, we have, of course, uh, absolute value of x is less than s. Okay, and for this, we have uh, this difference between f of x and fn of x is this sum. So this is partial sum of the first n elements. So this uh, this is infinite sum. So this is k from n plus 1 to infinity. A k and uh, uh, x to the power of k. And by the uh, the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to the sum of each term. And xk. But the, the absolute value of a product is the product of absolute value, so we can split them. And now uh, this is equal to Uh, a k and we multiply by t to the power of uh, k and divide by the same uh, quantity so t to the power of k and x to the power of k divided by t to the power of k so let's combine them together uh, to the power of k and uh, x absolute value of x is less than uh, uh, less than s, this one. So this is less than n plus 1 infinity a k uh, t k s, so this is less than s, so we have this. And uh, for this part, it is uh, it is bounded. Okay, so that is less than n. And s uh, t k. So this m is constant. So we can take this out of the summation. And the rest here is smaller than epsilon over n. This one. So this is m times epsilon over m, that is epsilon. So after all, this difference is less than epsilon, where epsilon is an arbitrarily small positive real number. Therefore, uh, the statement holds. That means, in other words, this sequence of functions, polynomial functions, converges uniformly to this power series, f of x. Next is step two. Uh, here we show that f of x is actually continuous at any point in the interval. So let's see. OK, uh, let's say part one. Uh, step two, part one. Uh, by step one, uh, we can say that f n of x converges uniformly converges to f of x. So that means for any epsilon that is positive, uh, we have so just a shorthand way to uh, write this convergence. We can say that f of x minus f n of x. This difference is less than epsilon over 3, so for uh, large enough n, enough n, okay? So this is a, a shorthand way of saying that fn converges uniformly to f of x.
And by the same argument, for any a in the interval, uh, we can say that f of a minus fn of a is less than epsilon over 3 for large enough n. Okay, so same thing. So we just replace x with a. And actually, we're using uh, the same epsilon here and here. Okay, and third, since fn of x is a polynomial function, it is continuous. on uh, the interval i. So that means uh, for all a in the interval fn of x minus fn uh, of a is less than uh, epsilon over 3. If uh, actually there exists a delta and if uh, x minus a is less than delta, then we have this. Okay, this is the definition of continuity. And any polynomial function is continuous. So we have this. So we combine this uh, 1, 2, 3 to show that f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. Okay, so this is, uh, let's do it one by one. So fx minus fn of x plus fn of x and uh, let's say uh, minus fn of a plus fn of a minus f a. Okay, so this one is this one, and this one is this one, and other things we just add and subtract the same thing, okay? Fn of x, Fn of x, and Fn of a and Fn of a. So this is the same thing, okay? And using the triangle inequality, we split this into three sums. F of x minus Fn of x plus uh, this and this, okay, fn of x minus fn of a, and plus uh, this part, fn of a minus f of a. And each of them, this term, this term, this term, they are less than epsilon over 3. Right, so this we got from part one, uh, part, part one here, and this last one is part two, this one, and the second one comes from the continuity of a polynomial function. So this, we have this, and finally we have epsilon here. So therefore, f of x is continuous at x equal to a, but a is any uh, value from the interval. Therefore, uh, therefore, f of x is continuous, continuous on i. And we're done. Next, we consider the integration of a power series. That is, suppose we have f of x, which is defined as a power series, uh, an example of n, with radius of convergence r greater than 0. Then we have, uh, for any x in this interval, we have the following equality. f of t dt is equal to the sum of this a n over n plus 1 x to the power of n plus 1 okay 
So what this means is that we can actually swap the order of integration and the summation. So uh, put, put this in another way. Uh, we have this. So f of t is this summation. Uh, a n uh, t to the power of n. So if we integrate this, the result is, so this is integral of a sum. Okay, and the result is the sum of integrals. So let's see, uh, a n t to the power of n dt. Okay, so if we integrate this, we get this, right? So basically what we are doing is swapping the order of integration and summation. Okay, so if the radius of convergence is, is greater than one, uh, greater than zero, then we can change the order of the integral and the sum. So that's what we have as a theorem. Okay, so let's prove this. And as before, we define this partial sum. So k okay, from zero to n, we take the first n terms from the power series. And as we uh, have shown before, this sequence of functions converges uniformly to the power series f of x. Again, so what that means is that for any epsilon that is greater than zero, then we can uh, have this inequality f of x minus fn of x is less than epsilon for uh, large enough or sufficiently large enough uh, large n okay so if n is large enough this difference can be made arbitrarily small now we take the difference between the integrals of these two functions Okay, and the absolute value of this uh, dt minus uh, from 0 to x f or fn of t dt. So the difference between integrals is the integral of the difference. And by the triangle inequality, uh, this is less than or equal to the absolute value of the integrand. And since this part, for large enough n, this is less than epsilon, so this is less than epsilon and which is equal to epsilon x, but actually uh, this should be absolute value of x because it should be positive. Well, anyway, so for a fixed value of x, so x is between uh, uh, negative r and r, so it is finite, and this epsilon can be arbitrarily small, so that means the difference between these two integrals can be made arbitrarily small. So what this means is that this integral of fn, uh, fn of t dt, this converges to the integral of f of t. Okay, so put it another way. Uh, so since f t is the limit of f n of t. So what this means is that n going to infinity, the, uh, the limit of the integral of this function is the integral of the limit uh, n going to infinity uh, f n dt. Okay, so what, uh, what we have here is that we can swap the order of limit operation and integral. Okay, 
So in this case, this is possible. It's not always possible, but in this particular case, it's possible. But now, if n is just a polynomial function, so if we just integrate it, f n of t dt, so it's just a finite sum of uh, powers of uh, x, uh, from k from 0 to n, a k x k, uh, it's t actually, t d d t. So for a finite sum, we can uh, swap the order of integral and the sum with no problem. So a k d t to the power of k d t. So that is a k uh, k plus one t to the power of k plus one. So ah, sorry, uh, this is not infinity, but it's finite sum. So it's n. So now, if we take the limit of n going to infinity, then we have uh, on the on this side on this side we have uh, this uh, series uh, k, uh, k from 0 to n and n going to infinity that is this uh, k from 0 to infinity and a k, k plus 1, t to the power of k plus 1. So that is, on the right hand side, we have this. So that is the integral of the power series. And we are done. So in the case of a power series with positive radius of convergence, we can just integrate each term separately. So that, that is called term-wise integration of a power series. Next, we consider uh, differentiation of power series. So suppose we have a power series, f of x, uh, defined by this, a n x to the power of n. And next, we consider another function, g of x, defined by this power series. Uh, a, actually, n starts from 1. And n times a n times x the, to the power of n minus 1. So if you look at this carefully, uh, this term is the derivative of this term, right? So basically, uh, the function g of x is obtained by term-wise differentiation of the function f. And in fact, we will show that if we differentiate f of x with respect to x, then we get this g of x. So we can indeed differentiate a power series term-wise. Actually, we can say a little bit more. Uh, so that that is the radius of convergence of g of x is equal to the radius of convergence of f of x. So f and g are defined in this way. Okay, and two. Uh, this is the main result. F prime, that is the derivative of f, is equal to g of x. Okay, so let's prove this. Uh, first thing, so the radius radi of convergence is uh, the same for both functions. Okay, so to show that, let R be the radius of convergence of f of x, and R prime be the radius of convergence of g of x. And we show that these are equal. Okay, first we show that r is less than or equal to 
r prime. And later we show the opposite inequality and conclude that they are actually equal. And if r is equal to zero, then uh, this is trivial, right? Uh, this is trivial. So therefore, suppose r is strictly positive. And it is sufficient uh, to show that for all x such that uh, abs its absolute value is less than r, we have uh, uh, g of x converges converges absolutely. So if we show this, then we have shown that this is true. So let's do that. Now, um, let S be such that that is greater than the absolute value of x, but less than the radius of convergence of f of x. Because s is less than r, then this series, uh, n from 0 to infinity, a n uh, s to the power of n, converges absolutely. So that means uh, this, this sequence here, a n times s to the power of n, s to the power of n is bounded. So uh, the, there is some constant m that is positive such that uh, a, a, a n times s to the power of n is less than m. Now uh, let T be uh, abs the ratio between the, the absolute value of x and s, which is less than 1 and greater than 0. And our goal right now is to show that g of x converges absolutely. Okay, so let's consider this series. N from zero, uh, n from one to infinity, absolute value, uh, n times a n, and times x to the power of uh, n minus one. Uh, absolute value should be here. Okay, so this is equal to. So we. Uh, multiply by s to the power of n minus 1 and divide by the same quantity. So that would be n a n times uh, s n and uh, divide by same thing so that is x over s n to the power of n and uh, divide by another s so this s is to the power of n minus 1 so 1 n is missing a uh, 1 s is missing so that's extra s here and uh, so x over s is t n and t to the power of n minus 1, 1 over s. And uh, since, uh, where is it? Uh, here. This is bounded, a n times s to the power of n. This is bounded, so this is less than Bounded so wait a bit. infinity n n over s and uh, n is still here 
and t to the power of n minus 1. So we have this series here. Now we apply uh, D'Alembert's criteria. So that is so n plus 1 over s uh, t to the power of n over this one. And so this is n plus 1, n, n, t. And this converges to t as n goes to infinity. And this t is less than 1, yeah, by definition here. Therefore, Therefore, by D'Alembert, D'Alembert uh, criterion, uh, Gx converges. Actually, it converges absolutely. Okay, next, uh, next we show r prime is less than or equal to r. And for that, we show that for all x in this interval, uh, f of x converges absolutely. Converges absolutely. Absolutely. So this is sufficient. Okay, if we if we can show this, it's done. Uh, of course, uh, when r prime is zero, then this is trivial. So we as we are assuming that r prime is uh, positive. Okay, but this this is actually easy to prove. Uh, let's see. For uh, a n x to the power of n. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, a, let's put one of the x out, then when n is greater than, okay, so in the summation, n, if n is 0, then we can just ignore it, and when n is greater than or equal to 1, then this a n times x to the power of uh, a n is less than or equal to a n times a n and x to the power of n minus 1. And now since x is assumed to be in this interval, so the absolute value of x is less than r prime. So n uh, a n x n plus 1. And uh, we already know that uh, the power series G of x converges absolutely. Now, each term of f of x is bounded above by the term uh, or some multiple of the term of the series power series G of x. So that means G of x is a dominating series. Dominating power series of uh, f of x. But uh, G of x converges absolutely, therefore uh, f of x converges absolutely. And we're done. So that means we have this inequality and we have uh, this inequality. So this and this, therefore, R e prime is equal to R. So the ready of convergence are the same for both power series.
Okay, let's prove part two. So since r is so r is the radius of convergence of f of x uh, is assumed to be positive, then r prime, which is by part one, is equal to r, is greater than zero. So therefore, uh, we can integrate uh, g of x termwise. So by uh, termwise integration, uh, we have g of t dt equals to so if you if you just integrate each term of g of t then we have uh, this n from 1 to infinity a n times x to the power of n which is actually e almost equal to f of x except for the constant term a0 okay so we have this inequality and uh, this uh, left hand side, this is of course differentiable with respect to x. Therefore, the right hand side, this one, f of x minus a0, is also differentiable. So we just differentiate both sides, and we have f of f prime of x is equal to, so by the fundamental theorem of k plus we have g of x. So fundamental theorem of k plus. And we are done. Okay, now let's mention some of the uh, immediate results derived from these theorems. Corollary 1. So if we have this power series uh, n from 0 to infinity a n x to the power of n with radius of convergence greater than 0, then this function is of class c infinity. So this is a smooth function, and uh, uh, it's differentiable infinitely many times. Okay, and its derivative is also differentiable infinitely many times. So class C infinity with the same radius of convergence. Okay, and next, I think this is easy to see. And next. If we have this power series, uh, same power series like this, and with the radius of convergence greater than zero, then uh, for each integer, uh, non-negative integer, k okay, from uh, zero, one, two, three, and so on, each coefficient, this one, a k is equal to this. That is, this is the kth differential coefficient of this function at, at x equal to zero divided by k factorial. And I think this is easy to prove and uh, left as an exercise. So if we use this expression for each coefficient, that means this function f of x can be expressed as this, okay, from, uh, from 0 to infinity. Here, f, so uh, not 0, k, okay. 0, uh, k factorial, x to the power of k, like this. By the way, this is called a Maclaurin series. And we will study this later. And that's all for this video. See you later.